Hi everybody, I'm Rob and today we're talking about the Fuji X-T1. Alright, so I hesitate to call this a technical review of the camera because I really just want to talk a little bit about it and talk a little bit about the Fuji system and why I think this camera was mm, such a leap for me uh, and for my photography and a lot of things I think Fuji's doing right and maybe some things that uh, they didn't do very well with the X-T1. Um, first things first, just going to jump right in and talk about the design of the camera. I, I came from a Micro Four Thirds camera. I had a Panasonic G6 and it was a great camera. You know, it had decent autofocus and great video capabilities and, um, you know, it was a good step for me. Uh, this is about three or four years ago uh, into digital photography. You know, I hadn't really been doing a whole lot of photography uh, up until about like three or four years ago. Um, but, you know, the Panasonic G6 had the same type of dial system that you find on a lot of different cameras where you have just like the P mode and the A mode and the M mode and, uh, you know, sport mode and all this other stuff. And just like, I don't know, the dials didn't make a whole lot of sense. You know, you still had to go into a lot of menus and command buttons and figure things out. So it was a great camera, but I mean, it definitely felt sort of, I don't know, amateurish. I suppose I'm trying to say. Um, but then I kind of got more into film a little bit and I started using uh, some Mamiya cameras that I have. I have a, a Mamiya ZM and a 500 DTL. And you know, you go back to those film cameras and you have pretty simple controls. You've got your ISO selection. Um, uh, you've also got your shutter speed and uh, you have aperture on the lens, on a manual focus lens at that. So. That's pretty much it. That, those are your controls. There's no menus to dive into or anything like that. And I loved the simplicity of the Mamiya ZM. And I loved the simplicity of being able to turn the aperture ring, look down, see the shutter speed, adjust the shutter speed right then and there, like click, click. It's just very tactile and it was perfect. Like it just felt right. And it was easy to adjust exposure. And so when I heard about Fuji. I had the Panasonic G6 and I heard about Fuji and I was like, all right, well, I mean, that's, that's great, but that's like, you know, that's a little bit higher than I wanted to go. I didn't want to get into like APS-C, like, you know, I just wasn't into it. Then I heard more about the Fuji files and like the film simulations and I was like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jump in. So I got an X100S secondhand just to experiment and see what the Fuji files were like in Lightroom and just to kind of get an idea for what the camera felt like. And I really loved the X100S, but I missed the interchangeable lenses and I missed the, the sort of DSLR form factor. I really liked the, the SLR form factor. So in came the X-T1. After all that history, that's, that's where we're coming around to is the X-T1. And what really got me was just when you look at the top, of the camera on the X-T1, it's very simple. You just, you see something that's very reminiscent of the 35 millimeter cameras that I had kind of fallen in love with. You look down, you've got your shutter speed right then and there on a dial. You've got your ISO selection right there on a dial. The Fuji lenses have aperture ring. Well, most of them do. Most of them have aperture rings. So you look straight down, you can adjust your aperture right there on the fly. And I mean, for me, it was so simple as, as that to, to be like, all right, the X-T1 has a digital, it's a digital camera with an APS-C size sensor. That's what I want to get into. You know, I like the Fuji files from the X-100 and I said, if, if you want the combination of the SLR form factor and the Fuji files, then the X-T1 for me was the way to go. So I kind of, I, I, I traded in my G6 with somebody who was doing more video. He actually had an X-T1 he was giving away. So I gave him my G6 and a lens. I got the X-T1 out of it and you know, I tell you, it's just, it felt right straight from the, straight from the get-go. 16.3 megapixel APS-C size sensor inside the X-T1. Um, three inch LCD on the back that does have the tilting. Uh, you can put it up like that if you want to do some over the, over crowd shots, or if you want to do some more sort of, uh, you know, Hasselblad style kind of, you know, looking down at it, waist level viewfinder type of thing. You can do that too with the, the viewfinder or the uh, LCD, excuse me. So, I mean, it has some really good um, viewing options. The, the EVF, the electronic viewfinder inside the camera, obviously this is a mirrorless camera, so um, it doesn't have a mirror or any kind of mirror lockup or anything like that. So you're not seeing through, you know, a mirror through the lens. It's actually just a, basically a computer screen you're looking through. 
But the electronic viewfinder on the X-T1, it's just like, it's so fluid. Um, it's, it's got such a high refresh rate, such a high frame rate that you really don't feel like you're looking through a screen, you know? And the beauty of it is that you see your exposure instantly. So if, you, if you're overexposed, you see it instantly, you can adjust for that. If you're using the film simulation modes, the Provia or the Velvia, when you select them, you can instantly see what they do to impact your, your shot. You can even go into the menu and you can adjust your shadow tones and your highlight tones. So the, the EVF and the screen on the back are two very uh, great pieces of technology on the X-T1. Um, along with the, the other customizable buttons, you got a few customizable buttons on the front, on the top, um, on the back here as well. Um, and, and the beauty of this also is that when you buy the X-T1 or when you buy into the Fuji system, they've updated this camera maybe three or four times already. So it's already got a faster autofocus system built into it than when it was first released. Um, and sort of a, a bunch of other updates too. Almost all of the buttons in the back of the camera are now customizable to whatever kind of functionality that you want them to be. So, I mean, if you buy this camera, know that you're not getting the original X-T1 that was released, say, three or four years ago. You're getting a camera that was updated, I think, even just a year ago with more features, more customizability. I mean, one of the biggest things is that they added the electronic shutter into the X-T1. So, you know, you have a mechanical shutter speed that goes up to uh, one four thousandth of a second, but you have an electronic shutter speed that goes up to one thirty two thousandth of a second. So if you wanted to beat the sunlight and shoot wide open 1.2 on the 56 millimeter, you can do that with the electronic shutter. So, I mean, it's and then that wasn't there when the X-T1 was first released. So that's the great thing about the Fuji system. When you buy into the Fuji system, you're not just buying that camera, you're almost guaranteed to get a better camera later on down the road. So just taking a quick tour around the camera, obviously on the top plate here, we have our exposure compensation dial next to our shutter speed dial and our on off switch. There's a video record button here on the X-T1 and also a Wi-Fi button. And that's a great feature because you can connect to your cell phone and instantly transfer photos from your camera onto your smartphone if you wanted to share on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or any one of those social media networks. Off to the left there, you've got your ISO dial. And when you flip around to the camera to the front, you have a few customizable buttons. You have your, uh, your, focus, uh, your selection there for the uh, focus modes, single focus point, continual focus point, um, or the manual focus uh, mode also. Manual focus is great. You get uh, focus peaking, or you can do a digital split image. Personally for me, the digital split image isn't quite there. I mean, the manual focus rings are are all fly-by-wire on the X-T1, so none of them have that sort of tactile feel. They just continue to spin, 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 and slowly the split image comes together. It's really, the throw distance is really far, and it varies on lenses, really. I found that the throw distance on the 50, 140 millimeter zoom was pretty far, I just kept turning that thing. Some of the smaller primes, the, like the 18 millimeter, might have you know a smaller throw. But what I'm getting at is that if you're using manual focus, maybe stick to focus peaking and um, even do like, you know, autofocus lock on something with the AFL button just to get you in the vicinity of where you want to be and then just tweak the focus from there because the throw for the manual focus is pretty long. But it's nice to have that feature in the camera. And then when you flip around to the side, we have an access door here you can open up. And basically what we have are the uh, USB, HDMI, and the, uh, the small millimeter jack here for remote controls and for microphones. Um, this is one of the things about the X-T1 that gets a lot of people. These doors are very flimsy. Um, some people have broken those doors off completely. The other door on the other side is simply your uh, memory card slot. So you have one memory card slot there. And again, the door is kind of flimsy. A lot of people don't really like how the door feels and how it closes, but I personally haven't had any problems with it and I've been pretty happy with it. So basically on the back here, we have our trash and playback buttons, our auto exposure lock, our uh, auto focus lock, uh, command wheel in the middle here. And then basically we have a focus assist button, which you can punch in and see a little bit more clearly what you're actually focusing on. And I recommend the focus assist button if you're gonna be doing the focus peaking like we were talking about before, because if you're shooting wide open and you're focus peaking and you think you're on and you take that shot, 
when you get really close or if you do like 100% crop on it, you might notice that you're actually not on. Um, so the X-T1 has a really good focus peaking method, but use the, the focus assist to push in and really fine tune the focus peaking if you're shooting wide open because it can be very subtle, but you, you know, you think you're on, but you might just be a little bit too far in front of the plane or too, too shallow too far behind what you're trying to focus on. So adjust as you see fit, but use the focus assist button because it really comes in handy. And basically underneath that, we have a quick menu button. Again, that's the beauty of the X-T1. Uh, and a lot of digital cameras nowadays can do this, but uh, you know, you've got so many film simulation modes in the camera and you can, like I said before, you can adjust shadow tone, highlight tone, uh, color, stuff like that. So if you decide that you like the monochrome setting with the yellow filter and you like plus two shadows, minus one highlights, you can set that up and then in your quick menu button, you can just go through the presets that you've selected. So if you like to do landscapes with Velvia and certain settings, you can select that in the quick menu. Or again, if you're doing street photography and you like black and white, you can switch over to your monochrome quick setting. So you've got that at your fingertips. Um, the command dial on the bottom here, the, these little uh, four buttons, Basically, um, they used to have their own separate controls, but now you can set it up so that this controls where the focal, focal point goes on, the, uh, on the, the sensor. Your phase detection points are in the middle of the sensor. Contrast detection is on the outside. Um, and basically, you can just use that as a selector to scroll between which point you want. And then the display back button um, is there as well. On the bottom, it's you know pretty standard, pretty simple stuff. You've got your uh, battery compartment. Battery typically lasts between, uh, you know, they say like 300 shots, but I really have a hard time calculating that as far as this goes. I mean, maybe that is the one thing with mirrorless cameras and the X-T1 as well, it doesn't escape this, is that they just chew through batteries. But I have a pretty decent uh, amount of battery power. I can usually get through a whole day with two batteries. And the way I do that basically is I always have my finger on the on off button. Um, so if I see a shot that I want to take, I'll flip my camera on and you know, I'll take my shot and do what I need to do and keep it on for as long as I need to. But if I know that I'm done at that point, I'll just flip the camera to off. And the startup time in the X-T1 is like that. You know, you're, you're really not waiting at all. It's a second maybe, you know, um, so, you know, it's not like, um, film camera zone focus lift up and snap. There is a little bit of a, of a, of a lag, but it's like, it's minuscule. So by turning the camera on and off like that, I can conserve a lot of battery power and it's, it's recommended. If you haven't tried it before, you might want to consider it, especially if you have the X-T1, it seems to work really well. No detriment to the camera uh, that I ever noticed. You know, I've had it for a couple of years now and, you know, you flick it on and off and it, it just works fine. It doesn't seem to be hurting the electronics at all. So if you want to conserve battery life, that's what I've been doing. It's been working for me. You know, autofocus speed's still not quite up to uh, standards in DSLR. That's maybe one con of the X-T1 is that, you know, it's still going to miss focus. The X-T2 does a little bit better. Um, to some people, it does a lot better. I still have my own testing to do, but yeah, the autofocus on mirrorless cameras is still catching up to, to what a DSLR can do. So, you know, if you have like mission critical, job critical autofocus work, like, you know, birds in flight or something like that, yeah, maybe the X-T1 isn't gonna be the camera for you, but for the size and the weight, uh, the ergonomics, the, the dial selections on top, and the way it just uh, it makes shooting just feel easier and more tactile, definitely recommend the X-T1. So one of the last things that I want to say real quick about the X-T1 also is that the, the, the feel of the camera ergonomically is, is really nice out of the factory. The leatherette is, is grippy. It has a nice grip to it. You know, my pinky does kind of slide off the bottom here. I, I don't have a huge hands by any stretch of the imagination, but, um, you know, it just, it, it never really felt quite right, you know, kind of holding it like that. It is, it is a small camera by a lot of standards. So I went ahead and I picked up the Fuji extra grip here. They have two versions of this. This is sort of the medium grip. They also make a large grip and I'm not going to fit it on all the way, but I, I will kind of situate it here. And basically, you know, it just gives you just a little more clearance on the bottom. If you can see that. Okay. And it also provides a lot more grip 
um, attached to the side there. So you can basically kind of just hold it a little bit, you know, if you have like a wrist strap on, you're just holding it to your side. You just have a little bit more clearance there, a little bit more grip. It, to me, it's worth it. It's a little bit pricey. I think this is like $130 or something like that. Um, it does also, it screws into the bottom tripod socket and replaces the tripod socket with uh, central to the lens. So that's a pretty nice feature there. Um, 130 bucks though, it is pretty pricey. Again, I always say this, try to find it used if you can. Um, but to me, it's been a lifesaver. The grip is really nice. Um, not that the ergonomics of the camera aren't bad to begin with, but it is a very small camera by all, by all accounts. So like I said, this wasn't gonna be a very technical review of the camera. There's a lot more that goes on inside. There's a lot of menu settings and a lot of uh, other settings that I did not discuss. If you have any specific questions about it, you can leave them in the comments below and we can get more specific about it. But, you know, I just wanted to leave you with the fact that the X-T1, uh, the X-100S was sort of my gateway camera into Fuji, but the X-T1 is what really sold me on the Fuji brand and the Fuji system and the Fuji company. Um, I don't work for these guys. I don't get paid any money for saying this. I just really appreciate the brand. I love the fact that they have all of these firm firmware updates that come out for their cameras. I love the, the glass for the camera system. The lens selection is just increasing leaps and bounds every year. You know, you got three or four more lenses coming out. So for any type of shooter, uh, the X-T1 just seems to really be able to accommodate you. All right, guys, so that is my absolutely all-encompassing Fuji X-T1 spiel non-technical review. The camera is great, has a few flaws, but all in all, it's a great way to enter into the X-Series now if you're uh, looking into it. Uh, again, not hugely technical, but I do enjoy talking about that stuff. So if you want to keep the conversation going or you have a question about something I talked about or maybe something I glossed over, leave a comment down below. Keep the conversation going because I really do love talking about that stuff too. I'm kind of a gear nut as well. Um, but again, thanks for watching. Please like the video, uh, subscribe, share with your friends. And I'll see you in the next one.